Morning Church, I'm Mark Garrett, one of the core Alpha Leaders or Audacious Church's Chester campus. It's a great privilege and honour to be sharing my miracle moment with you today. My miracle moment was back in 2002, three weeks after the birth of my first child, Daniel. It was the 23rd of December and we were living in Reading and packing, ready to visit my family for Christmas. Daniel was doing great, Janet, my wife, was doing great. Church was great, work was great and it was Christmas, my favourite time of the year. Then, in a moment, we were plunged into the, one of the darkest moments we have ever had to face. We were packing up and getting ready to travel, and I had Daniel in his Moses basket and went to take him downstairs, the steep, very narrow Victorian staircase of our first house. And I slipped with him on the stairs. I still don't quite know how it happened. It all happened so fast. But the result was that I lost my grip and Daniel, Daniel fell out of the Moses basket and landed on the bottom step. I remember just charging down the stairs in a state of shock, panic and horror. I scooped him up, he was crying and had swelling to his head. I was absolutely devastated. It felt like my innards had been ripped out in one shocking moment. The local health visitors were located just across the road from where we lived and came over straight away. They were great, calming us down and reassuring us. They said they were sure Daniel would be fine, but wanted him to get checked by the GP. We had an appointment within the hour, and again, the GP said they were sure he would be fine, but to be on the safe side, take him to get checked out at hospital at Pediatric A&E. When we got there, the consultants were not as reassuring. In fact, they were extremely concerned. They didn't say much, but they didn't have to. Their faces said it all as did their actions as they fast-tracked Daniel through an array of tests and scans. We knew it was serious. I felt utterly desperate, so helpless, afraid. But in the trauma and chaos and confusion of that moment, I just remember having this overwhelming need to pray. It was like a desperate urge. I looked around and the only place was this tiny toilet cubicle on the ward. And it was tiny, just enough space to kneel. And I just cried out to God a desperate prayer that he would save Daniel's life. And in a moment, God just cut through those feelings of despair, pain, guilt, shock, the cocktail of stuff you just never want to feel, and brought to my mind the verses from the book of Job, which you may think a strange choice by the Almighty, but he always knows what he's doing, and he always knows what you need. The verses were from Job chapters 38 and 39, where God speaks to him and reminds Job of who he is. And I'm paraphrasing here. And God said, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Do you know who laid the cornerstone? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Where is the abode of light and where does darkness abide? Do you know? Can you bring forth the stars in their seasons? Where does the wind come from? Can you separate the seas from the land? And I just got such an incredible revelation of how God, great God is. That no matter what the diagnosis, God was big enough and above every circumstance and situation. And I really needed that because the diagnosis was a depressed skull fracture. Those words were probably the hardest words I've ever had to hear. My worry was, would he live? The medical concern was brain damage. I stayed with Daniel that first night in hospital. He was hooked up to all sorts of machines to monitor him. Later on that night, a friend of mine from a church, a consultant at the time, came to see me. He came onto the ward and was able to view the first scans of Daniel's brain and delivered the good news that it was looking positive. You see in the background, the whole church was now praying. Something I'll come back to, but you come to understand that God places the right people in the right place at the right time. Danny was checked every hour. I fed him, changed him. Everything the nurses wanted to see him do, he did. He ate well pooed well and drank well, all of which he remains very good at. And that night there were other babies on the ward, gravely ill, where her parents had to be called in. But in the corner of this large ward where we were, there was what I can only describe as a supernatural peace, like we were in some sort of bubble cocoon from the trauma of what else was going on. Daniel spent his first Christmas Eve night in hospital but on Christmas Day, just two days after being admitted, he was released and sent home for us to watch and wait. Over the following six months, it was a waiting game. We had all the baby textbooks as Daniel was our first, so we knew when he should do his first anything, like his first smile, laugh, rolling over, 
and everything he did, he either did on the week the textbook said or earlier. I believe that was God's way of reassuring us, his way of saying that all will be well. And I said it would be and it will be so. That didn't stop dark thoughts knocking on my mind's door, though. And on a daily basis, I had to choose to believe Daniel had been healed. And the antidote to those feelings was the word of God and making an active choice to believe what God said and not how I felt. And as bad and as overwhelming some of those thoughts and feelings were, they couldn't stand up to the word of God. Rather than be led by my feelings, God flipped it around so that those feelings had to fall in line with what he said. And I am so very grateful for that. At the end of the six months, we had a scan and then a final appointment at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford, which specialises in cranial trauma and abnormalities. We were nervous and the adrenaline was definitely pumping, but there was also an underlying peace. The consultant flashed up the scan results and said, look, as you can see, it was as if it had never happened. I often set that sentence against the words of the diagnosis, depressed skull fracture. Only God can do what God can do. There is a phrase in Alpha that says, base your faith on the word of God, not how you feel. Feelings come and go and can't always be trusted, whereas the word of God is constant and never failing. His promises stand firm. What you start, he finishes, and he will never leave you or forsake you. Base your faith on the word of God, not how you feel. I can't encourage you enough, church, to read the word of God. He's already revealed himself to us through his word. So if you want to know who he really is, who you are in him, how much he loves you, what his promises are, then read the Bible. It will help you to stand firm no matter what you face. Also, don't stand alone. Remember my consultant friend who knew what was happening because the message was out and the whole church was praying for us. We are never alone. God is with you and your church family will stand with you no matter what. So when you're next in church, look around. Even though you may not know the people standing to your left or your right, they're your family. That's my Daniel miracle moment and I can't think of a better way of ending than Daniel himself praying us out. Yeah, Lord God, thank you that you um, were good and that you are good, Jesus, and you will always be good. Lord God, I thank you that you are faithful and that you never, never leave us. Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for your word and we thank you that the word of God is what you speak. We thank you that is encouraging, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that you give us a peace that transcends all understanding. So we pray over every circumstance of any tough circumstances that anyone's going through that um, who are watching this video, Lord God, that you would give them that peace. Lord God, I pray that this testimony would encourage them, Lord God, and encourage them to get into your word and that we'd see the goodness of God in the land of the living and we'd see more breakthrough and miracle stories. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a great day.